Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers, you are very welcome. I have a word from the Lord received today, September 19, 2021. This is a grave word and it touches on a lot of points. And so I will try to move through all these points because they tie this prophecy ties together many previous prophecies, many previous things that I have already shared. If you are new to this channel, I truly recommend that before you start asking a lot of questions and leaving comments that you can easily solve for yourself, please try to go through the the over 100 prophetic words that are already on this channel. You can simply look at the channel playlists. I've created many playlists so that if you want to get better information and you want to better understand what the Lord is saying to us here, there's no way around it. You are going to have to make an investment of time. You are going to have to make an investment of study. Understand that prophecy forms part of the Lord's word, except that it is a right now delivery that is coming from the spirit of God. And so you can't really expect to be spoon fed these things. I've shared many times that it is time consuming to make these videos. And the, this is my offering to the Lord. This is my sacrifice to the Lord. So likewise, there needs to be some kind of involvement on your part. And instead of simply asking, but what about this? But what about that? Especially if you are new, understand that there is an entire library of things that I have already covered. And you have to go and dig just the way the Bible says, it's the glory of the Lord to conceal a matter, and it's the glory of kings to search it out. You're going to have to search it out because it's very rare that I see what people leave on here or the blog, and it's even rarer that I will have time to be able to respond. So another thing that I recently discovered that I would like to ask of viewers is, I just found out perhaps a day or two ago that um, people who watch the videos, if you like it, it helps the video to climb higher on the algorithm. I did not know that. This must be why people always ask for likes and subscriptions. So if you like a video, it causes the video to be more highly promoted by YouTube. And one of the concerns that I have been working on trying to solve with this channel is that more people see these words. I always say, especially in my writing, that there are over 330 million people in the United States. And yet it causes me some measure of pain that so few people are aware of what, of what the Lord is saying in this time. So if you would like these videos, it will help them to be more promoted by the YouTube algorithm from what I've read. And then I think it would appear on more people's channel feeds. So that's just something for you to consider. You can find everything that you need to know about the master's voice in the description box below. I always leave a snippet of what the video is about. And without further ado, let's begin. So the Lord was speaking to me this morning and one of the banner words that I have is what he said, to the four corners of the world, they will go. If a man survives, he will flee. He will tell this story. He will recount this woe, this lamentation, this tale of what became of America. The other scripture comes from Jeremiah chapter 15. So when the day started, I was spending time with the Lord in prayer, praise, and worship, just the two of us as it should be. And then the Lord said to me, Jeremiah 14, Jeremiah 14, and he kept saying it. So I stopped singing and I went Jeremiah 14. And as I was reading it in, in the beginning of the chapter, I didn't exactly see um, what the Lord might be speaking to me about, but I came to a certain point. And once I came to that point, I knew exactly what God was trying to say because he said it many times before. The time has not come to officially deliver that word. But when I saw it, my heart sank because I knew what he was trying to say. And immediately the Lord began to flood me with information, urging me to finish reading the chapter, but speaking to me at the same same time. And so as he was speaking to me, I read even into Jeremiah 15. When I'm reading and God wants to bring forth information from a particular point, he will say, keep reading, keep reading, keep reading, because he wants me to absorb and refresh all that information before he finishes speaking. So God released a lot today, and I will try to get through it in two videos, one video giving the information and the second video going over what I read in Jeremiah 14 and 15. 
So the scripture here at the banner is Jeremiah 15, 1 to 4. And it basically says, Then the Lord said to me, Even if Moses and Samuel came to stand before me, I would not have a favorable mind towards these people. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. And it shall be that if they say to you, Well, where should we go? Then you will tell them, Thus says the Lord, Those appointed for death, to death. And those appointed for the sword, to the sword. And those appointed for the famine, to the famine. And those who are appointed for captivity, to the captivity. And I will appoint over them four forms of destruction, says the Lord, the sword to slay them and the dogs to drag them, the birds of the heavens and the beasts of the earth that will devour and destroy. And I will hand them over to trouble to all kingdoms of the earth because of Manasseh, the son of Hezekiah, the king of Judah, for what he did in Jerusalem. So this is the word that I received early this morning and the Lord poured out about many, many things. And here I am. So let those who have a heart to listen, listen, and let those who have a heart to hear, hear a great destruction. This is what God says, that they will have no one to defend them. God says that America will not have a man to defend her. He says that there will be no bulwark and no strong defense for this nation. There will be no one to stand in the breach for them or defend their strong cities. For the soldiers shall fall at my wrath. The soldiers of the United States will fall at my great anger. And when they are cut down, the nation shall be desolate. And so the prophecy that ties into this, one of them that came to mind is a prophecy that I gave, mm, I think it might be in 2020, and it's called the mother of seven. And that is a very bitter prophecy that draws from Jeremiah 15. I have shared that I have seen many times in the visions of the Lord that the, the soldiers of the United States, all of her army, her infantry, her sea people and her land people and the air force and all the forces that you can think of will be greatly decimated in a great war that will come to these United States. There will be a great war here and the soldiers and in fact, the entire military and, uh, Protective infrastructure will be completely unprepared for it. America will be very greatly defeated in that military conflict. And as the prophecy states, as the prophetic word of God states that you can read in the prophecy called the mother of seven, the bodies of the servicemen and women of this nation will lie in piles. So they will lie as I have seen them. They will lie out in the open and they will have died in so many numbers that it will be impossible to bury them. So you will see the various uniforms of the USA lying in in the open, lying exposed to the elements um, because of how many they will be that pass away. And I also want it to be understood. If you are a serviceman or you are a servicewoman in the United States, may your heart not fail at hearing this word because I think it is important. And I always reiterate, it is important to understand what is going on here. If you are new to this channel, this is a channel that is bringing forth the prophetic word of the Lord as it relates to judgment. So you will never see celestial on this channel coming on and telling you that God is bringing you your new car or your new house, or it's a season where you're going to triumph over your enemies. Yes, the Lord does say these things. The Lord is not exclusively speaking judgment prophecies, but here on this channel, on the master's voice, here I am bringing forth the prophetic words of the Lord that relate to the judgment of America as mystery Babylon. I'm not here to debate back and forth with people who believe that mystery Babylon is the Catholic church, or they believe that it is Rome, or they believe that it is Iraq or Iran or whatever else. I have long left such um, conjecture in the past. I am talking about things that the Lord has released and said that the mystery of who end times Babylon is, is very well clear. I am not the only messenger who is saying this. And in fact, in one of the prophecies on the master of his voice, that is called the Kuiper Belt, Kuiper Belt and and fire. God made it very clear that America will have no excuse before him in understanding that she was mystery Babylon because he said he sent a man here to her many, many years ago. Before the Lord started speaking prophecy to me, he sent a pastor by the name of Dimitri 
Dudeman. And that man was a Romanian who came to the United States without even the ability to speak English. And he came here because he was brought here by the Lord to pronounce that unless America would repent and turn from her sin, she absolutely would be destroyed. Dimitri Dudeman was perhaps one of the first pastors to reveal to the American church society that she the United States is Mystery Babylon. So it's not anybody else. And if you're still arguing that point, you're going to find yourself arguing alone because I'm not even going to pick up the thread of that conversation with you. America has not heard the word of the Lord to repent. And therefore, a great destruction will come here. And that destruction will take many different forms. It will take the form of social decline. It will take the form of economic decline. It will take the form of um, defeat in international military conflicts. It will even take the form of civil war. It will take the form of very devastating natural disasters. Natural disasters, the Lord says, that will come upon the whole nation and the nation will be judged in a whole fashion, meaning that every single living thing that is in this nation shall be tried by the Lord and the unrighteous will be very harshly excuse me, punished. And so if you are a soldier today, you have to understand that the protection of your soul and the protection of your life will not come from the United States Army. It will not come from the Navy. It will not come from the Marines. It will not come from the police force. It will not come from the political um, hierarchy. It will not come from the Air Force, the Coast Guard, no matter where you're serving today. Even if you're in um, the fire department, the rescue services, none of those things are able to protect your eternal soul and preserve your life and your family's life. And so if you are in these areas and you are hearing the sound of my voice, you have two choices. You can continue to follow in the oorah and think that that is what is going to protect you from the things that God says is coming here. Or you can understand that it is time to bow your knee to something stronger than the military industrial complex of the United States. God said that there will be no strong defense for America. He said that there will be no manned man to defend this nation and that the soldiers will fall. And so it may be time for you to consider humbling yourself before the Lord. It is a noble thing to be in the military. It is a noble thing to serve your country as a warrior. Unfortunately, um, the military arm of this country is warmongering. It causes excessive harm, pain, loss, and devastation all over the world. And now God is about to judge it, not only for, for things, atrocities that it has done in modern times, but stretching all the way back. And if you are a soldier, if you are a pilot, whatever it is you are, and you know, for instance, that you have been on assignments that have troubled you, your conscience and the things that you have done on your assignments in terms of following orders have never sat right with your heart. They've given you nightmares. They've given you PS PTSD. It is time for you to get on your knees and ask forgiveness of God for what you have done, for the blood that you have shed in following orders and things like that. It is time for you to repent and ask forgiveness so that when the sword of the Lord comes to divide between the righteous and the unrighteous, it doesn't divide saying, oh, this guy is a soldier. She's a soldier. They need to fall. It divides in saying, even if she is a soldier, even if he is a soldier, they are my child and them I will protect. We move on to the next part of the prophecy. It is entitled Foreign Invasion. This is the word of the Lord, foreign invasion. The Russians are coming as an act of my, vengeance, my vengeance and their precision to target the wicked with pinpoint accuracy will be as a result of my Holy Spirit. That will cause every unrepentant sinner to be caught in their trap with perfect accuracy. Although they do not know you personally, they will know by the guidance of the Lord who is a rebel against me, who is a sinner, who is a breaker of God's law. And those people will be taken captive with an uncommon accuracy as they face the wrath of the Lord. The righteous in the land will escape. They will be protected. But this judgment is upon the whole land. If a man escape with his life, it is by the mercy of Yahweh. It is the goodness of the Lord that will allow you to still see days when this judgment is being fulfilled. Foreign troops will utterly trample them here. 
Americans will be trampled underfoot, and the weak among them will be like grass before an ox, eaten up and consumed with nothing left behind. The Lord said that he was telling me and is telling me this information that I bring because I am his servant. And the scripture he gave me is this. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, the Lord and his weapons of indignation to destroy the whole land. And that is Isaiah 13 and 5. And so there's no one prophecy that I can bring up when I speak about this because there are, there's an entire playlist on the master's voice. It's called the Russian China playlist. And I think there's about 15 or 16 prophetic words where I detail with accuracy and with care, the time that I have invested in this channel and in the blog, writing down the Lord's words and making a careful record is considerable time. And so, like I said in the beginning, I hope that you will also invest the time to read and to study these things. And there, the Lord answered in this particular part of the prophecy entitled Foreign Invasion, where he said that the Russians will be able to capture with, with shocking and perfect accuracy, everyone who was actually a rebel against God. It answered a question that I have had, but not really asked the Lord, which is when foreign, when foreign soldiers come to a country, how are they really going to know who is, who is righteous and who is unrighteous? We know that the father cannot be lied to, and the Lord knows who are his children. He knows who are real Christians, and he knows those who are pretending, and he knows those who absolutely don't care. But how would a Russian, a Chinese, or or a Ukrainian soldier coming here for war actually know this. And the Lord answered this and brought to mind the teaching of King Jehoshaphat and King Ahab in the Old Testament. And it's so interesting because in that story, King Jehoshaphat, who I think was head over Judah and King Ahab, who was head over Israel, at times the two, the two kingdoms would fight, but at times they would be quite close because the two kings would be friends. And so these two kings happened to be in a period where they were friends. And so Jehoshaphat went to visit Ahab at the time that Ahab was planning a military campaign against another place. And so they're talking and Ahab says to Jehoshaphat, come to war with me. And Jehoshaphat is a more submitted king than King Ahab. This is Ahab who was married to wicked Jezebel and who hated God and did nothing to honor God. And so Jehoshaphat says, well, I'd be glad to support you in war, but I would just like to know what the word of the Lord is. So let us inquire of the prophets and find out what the Lord would say about this planned campaign. Many Christians don't ask the Lord about anything. They don't seek the Lord about big decisions, who to marry, whether to take a job, where to move, what to do with their lives. They make these decisions based on what I just basically call logic. They try to puzzle it out and think that, oh, they can work it out and they can have an understanding. And then when they've made a decision, then they go to the Lord and ask the Lord to bless their decision. And this is why many people in the body of Christ have ended up in holes. They don't involve the Lord in anything and they think Think that God exists almost as a kind of rubber stamp on what they want to do. And this is why many of us cannot make progress in our lives because we don't honor the Lord and we don't put him in the place that he belongs. So Jehoshaphat was a king that honored the Lord, just like King David of whose lineage he was. And he said, let's, let's inquire of the Lord. We have prophets. Let's ask them. Now Ahab's court was filled with prophets. He had about 400 or 450 prophets there who were all infected with a lying spirit. And so their prophecies always dovetailed perfectly together and they always backed each other up. But there was one man who had the, Lord, the word of the Lord in his mouth and his name was Micaiah. And so when they asked them, should we go out in this military campaign? Should we go and fight? All of them were like, go forth and prosper. You will do great. One of them even picked up the horns of a bull, metal horns, and came and said, with these horns, you will toss and turn and throw the enemy away. And the king was like, yeah, see, God wants us to go. And Jehoshaphat said, is there no man here in whose mouth is the word of the Lord? And Ahab thought about it and he said, there is one, but he never prophesies anything good. He never has a positive, loving prophecy from the reckless love God to give me Nevertheless, let, them call, let us call him. And so they called Micaiah, and the guard who went to get Micaiah said to him, Please, all the other prophecies are, all the other prophecies are saying this is coming for the war. They're all positive, and they all tell the king that he will be successful. Try to do the same. And Micaiah said, By the Lord God, I will speak only what the Lord gives me. 
And so he comes and they ask him, what is the word of the Lord for this war that we want to have? And Micaiah says, go forth, go forth. You will surely be successful. And he must have said it with sarcasm because even Ahab was able to perceive that it was not a genuine prophecy. And he said, how many times have I told you that when you prophesy to me, you tell me only what the Lord says. And Micaiah said this, I see all of Israel scattered like sheep upon the hill. And the Lord says, these have no master. Let them go to their house. And Ahab was angry. And he said, you see Jehoshaphat, I told you, he never says anything good. So they decide to go ahead with the war anyway. But when they go to battle, Ahab decides that just to be sure, he's going to disguise himself as a normal warrior. So he went out without the robes of a king. He went out without the crown and he went out without all the security detail that is supposed to ride in chariots around kings to protect them. Jehoshaphat went out dressed as a king. So when the enemy saw Jehoshaphat, they said, there is the king of Israel because the quarrel was only with Ahab, not with Jehoshaphat. So when they saw a king in the battle, they thought, this is the king. And they began to ride upon him to kill him. But Jehoshaphat realized that he was out of alignment with God's timing and he was where God told him not to be. Let this be a warning to many of you as you watch this video. If you align yourself out of God's timing, purpose, and calling, you will almost, in many cases, bear the penalty for being in disobedience. Jehoshaphat repented right there in the chariot and he cried out to God, my God, save me. And the Lord sent knowledge into the hearts of the enemy and they saw, this is not Ahab. And they turned from him. But to go back to what I was saying about how the Russians will know who is righteous and who is a sinner in this country, the spirit of the Lord will tell them and you will not be able to hide from the judgments that these people will be used to bring upon this nation. The Bible says that a man drew his bow at chance, meaning that he had no idea where Ahab was because he wasn't dressed as a king. He drew his bow at chance and he loosed it while the battle was going on. And the bow went to Ahab guided by the Lord and caught him between the joints of his armor. And it hit him in a crucial part of his body. He was so badly wounded that he said to the chariot man, take me aside, take me aside. I am wounded. I am wounded sore. And he stayed in the, cha the chariot watching his people be routed and beaten by the enemy. And the Bible says that he bled out into the chariot and died at sundown. And when his chariot was taken back to the city, they washed it in the public square and his blood came out upon the ground and dogs came and licked his blood just as the prophetic word of the Lord has said. So to those who come to this channel and think that I am just here because I'm bored, I am bringing the word as one out of many. What the Lord God says is what will come. They will know by his spirit who is righteous and who is unrighteous. And that is how it will be. The title of this word is to the four corners. So the Lord says, I'm telling you this for it to be recorded as a witness against this nation. I will make America a desolation. I will trample them under my feet and I will scatter them to the four corners of the earth. To the four corners, go. Those who survive will flee in four directions, nor north, south, east, and west. They will scatter across the world, carrying stories of their great fall and judgment. They will be scattered abroad to every nation, and some will receive them and some not. Some nations will give them comfort, but other nations will serve them mockery. They will drink the bitter cup of my anger. They will drain it until it is gone. I will judge this nation to its core, and at last, when it is removed, my anger against them will be satisfied. And the word that the Lord gave me here is, they shall know that I am the Lord when I scatter them among all nations and I disperse them throughout the countries. But I will spare a few of their men from the sword, from famine and from pestilence that they may declare all their abomination. So all their wickedness and everything that they did to cause the Lord to judge them so harshly, they will confess these abominations among the Gentiles wherever they go. Then they shall know 
that I am the Lord. And this is Ezekiel 12, verses 15 to 16. And so I have shared um, in some of the videos, I can't pinpoint which one, but I have shared that I have seen that after what happened here or before what happened here, during what happened here, there was an exodus from the country. So I think it's in the prophecy ascendancy. In the prophecy ascendancy, the Lord showed me one of the scenes that I saw were passports clicking through the passport clicker as people left the country. And um, one of the first signs of the mass exodus from the United States was foreigners. So people who have lived here for even 30, 40 years, people from the EU and people from other countries, they made the decision, single people, families, um, people who have come here to work, they made the decision that they would leave the United States. And many of them left without taking their assets. They left everything here and they simply went. Um, and there were different types of exoduses. So some people left when there was still time and some people left under the great hurry of laws that were passed here. So certain laws will be passed here in the future that will cause a mass exodus of foreigners. They will simply decide that they are not going to live under these kinds of laws and they will leave. America will become extremely repressive and even Americans will ask their kids, do you still want to stay or should we go somewhere else? And the kids will say, we want to leave. This is what I saw. I saw American families deciding to leave their country of birth and they went and they lived abroad. But I also saw, and I shared that I saw people fleeing. So this was when you flee, then you're leaving a very pressing, difficult situation. I saw people fleeing and they came to different nations and some of the nations re received them with love and gave them what they needed. But some of the nations received them with mockery. They laughed at them and they said, Oh, what happened American? Why are you here? Why, why is the great American here? And some nations actually refused used them, um, entry. So they stamped in their passport, no, and they were forced to go back to wherever they had fled from. And God says that he will scatter the Americans across the four faces of the earth so that they can confess their sins. So I saw that in the future, they will be forced to recount again and again and again, the survivors, why the nation was destroyed. They will be forced to talk about the many sins that I address on this channel over and over again. And in that way, it will almost be like 9-11. They will be forced to relive the pain. They will be forced to relive being in diaspora, which means being driven away from your home because of difficult circumstances taken, taking place where you come from. And so the Lord says that because of children that are murdered in the womb, he says that this is an entire population that has disappeared on American soil before it even manifested. So a lot of bloodshed, the nation of bloody skirts, God called this nation in the prophecy without reprieve. Um, for the innocent blood that is shed here in child sacrifice, and for the rituals that are conducted here, and for the blood sacrifices that take place to this day while the nation, while the victims cry out to me until their voices become silent. So this is basically people crying out as they are murdered in sacrifices, as they are murdered in rituals, are they as they are murdered in um, satanic ritual abuse, whereby you sexually molest and abuse children and adults until they come to the very cusp of expiry. And then at that point where their life is about to end, you then sacrifice them in a specific way to release demonic power that those who conduct these rituals wish to receive. God says that this bloody nation will be judged. He says that this is a bloody nation and he will repay even the blood of the ancient people. So we are talking about the African Americans and we are talking about the Native Americans that were exterminated here in the past. The Lord says that the nation will bear judgment. He says that America is a war monger. He says, for the atrocities that you have committed against foreign populations, did you not put your boot on the heads of Iraqis and take photos of it? I will judge this land and every living thing in it, for the anger of the Lord foams as the sea against this place, and so shall the sea come up out of its banks and cover you from my eyes. This is the word of the Lord. 
So I have shared all of these points. If you wish to get the best out of this ministry, make a habit of visiting the blog at the bottom of the blog where after you read the prophecies on the white field, there is a blue field at the bottom and that's where you get comments and below the comments, you will find a little box, the search box. So if you go and you type in abortion, if you go in and type in African American, if you go in and type in Native American, if you go in and typing, type in tsunami, you will find all these things mentioned. Um, the things that God says he will judge the nation for, for going to war and molesting foreign populations. America, you have a lot of this blood on your hands. Um, you have gone and done things that have never been disclosed to the American population. And so Amer the American population itself is um, always happy when the boys go out there to do stuff. But God says that this nation as a whole will reap the judgment for the things that the boys have gone overseas and done sexual immorality and total depravity. We come to the next part of the prophecy, come to address things that I really, as a woman, do not want to have to speak about on camera, but in obedience to the father, if he has to see it, he has said to me, celestial, if I have to see it, why can't you? And I think that that is a very excellent argument on the Lord's side. And this is why I deal with these things as he shows them to me. I see homosexuality um, bare. God does not cover these people when he shows me in the vision. I actually see what they are doing. I see the abortion table. I see them taking babies out, pulling them out with a clamp. Things that I've never actually witnessed in real life, I see in the visions of the Lord. And so I will make these things known, that this nation will know that there will be no hiding. God says in this prophecy that America will be naked as a virgin before her husband. Everything will be laid bare so that people will know why judgment is great and strong against this nation. The Lord was very angry as he was delivering this prophecy to me, not angry against me, celestial, but angry and delivered the words with anger. The pictures were before me and therefore I will be true to what he has shown me. Sexual immorality and depravity. For that day will not come unless a great falling away comes first. A great embracing of whoredoms where the entire earth will revel and party like never before. America is a party nation, smoking, drinking, and fornicating under every green tree. The abominations that the other nations are afraid to commit are legalized in America. Same sex, cutting the womb, and every form of perversion has found its home here. The women of this nation lie in their blood. Now, I will make mention of this. I've shared just two seconds ago many of the things that I've seen, but there is one practice that when I see it, because the Lord reveals it so graphically to me, it, be, it, it causes me frustration and anger. And it is that women in this nation will have sexual relations while they are on their monthly time. So the monthly time traditionally in scripture, it was seen as so unclean for women, that the women were asked to go and live outside the Israelite camp for that time. So if you were a three-day, five-day, even seven-day woman, you had to know that you would spend time in a special camp for the women outside. You were not allowed to mingle with other people, especially not men. You could not be near your husband, family. Everything that you touched was seen as unclean. And so it was just easier for the women to go out of the camp and live there. Yet progress so-called progress and move forward to modern times and women around the world, but especially in European nations and Western nations commit what other people in other cultures would faint before they tried doing. And that is having sexual relations during this time of a woman. I have seen it. I have spoken of it in the prophecy, blood to drink. God revealed the bloody sins of America in that prophecy, and it is one of the most graphic in this ministry. If you have not seen it, please see it. The Lord says that the women of this nation lie in their blood, and it will bring a great judgment against all who do this. It says that America will be a den of dragons. Thus says the Lord, I will make it a den of dragons, and it will be the home of the spirits of the cursed places. The hooting owl will live there. The ostrich and the night spirits will play there. When I make America a desolation that has never been seen before at any time period in history, 
before now. I will make this the home of demons, and thus will the word of my messengers be fulfilled. And the scripture is Jeremiah 9 and 11, and he gave me that this morning. I will make Jerusalem into heaps and a den of dragons, and I will make the cities of Judah desolate without an inhabitant. So when the Lord is saying den of dragons, let us understand He's not talking about Pete, the magic dragons, and he's not talking about how to train your dragon. If only it were that. He's talking about something much worse, and that is the coming of demons into a space. Understand that when God loves a person, the body is seen as the temple by God, and the Spirit of God inhabits the temple. And the Spirit of God is perhaps, he is many things, but he is also one of the best security and alarm systems that you can have. The Holy Spirit will alert you to when things are wrong, to when danger is near, to when you should not go to a certain place, because harm will come to you. But when the Holy Spirit begins to recede from a person, when he begins to depart from a population, understand that the protection and the hedge that he brings along with the blood of Jesus also begins to recede. And when the house is left unprotected, just as a real house can easily be broken into, thieves can come in and take what is valuable. When this physical temple is not protected, demonic spirits will enter in with ease. So I have shared in several of my prophecies that I have seen an alarming rise in spiritually oppressed and demonically possessed people here in New York City. When you go to the city, especially in Manhattan, this is extremely prevalent. So if you live in Manhattan and you're watching this and you're scoffing, you go right on ahead because you have no idea of spiritual things and you probably cannot perceive a demonically possessed person even until the moment they strike you. And you would probably just think, oh, why did this guy hit me? There are so many people in New York City whose vessels have been breached and other spirits that are not the Holy Spirit and other spirits that are not that person's human spirit are living in them. And as a spiritually alert person, as somebody who is very tuned into the spiritual realm, when I do go outside, I see these people and I have mentioned that they are becoming a literal army in the city of New York that we are going to definitely have to deal with. And so the Lord said to me in one of the prophecies, and I will repeat it here, that because the den of dragons will grow, meaning that people will have not one, not two, but 50, a hundred, even a thousand demons living in them. He said that one of the major indications that this prophecy is true is that you will see crime in the United States skyrocket, but it will not just skyrocket as ordinary crime. The Lord said that the atrocities that Americans will commit one against another, and especially within families, when the police are called and the police come to the crime scene, he said that these officers who have been on the force for 15, 20, 30 years, they will weep you won't be called for a domestic disturbance. You will be called because you haven't seen your neighbor in 15 days. And when the police finally come and toss the home, they will find that the husband has boiled the wife and peeled her like a grape and made a dress out of her skin and is wearing the dress when the officers come. You will see very horrific crimes taking place in the United States. And it doesn't matter how these people are sentenced because these people will not be committing these crimes by normal human passion, by normal human anger. They will be committing what is unimaginable. And that is because Satan can imagine things that human beings can't imagine. And so the crimes that Satan will commit in human bodies will be a frightful thing. And that will be part of the judgment on this nation. The home of the spirits that inhabit the cursed places. There will also be times in the future where gates, spiritual gates are opened in the United States and creatures that are fallen will enter into this nation. This is for a further time, but I don't know the timing of it, but the Lord has shown that the fallen ones, the fallen angels, unclean things, even the people who will change and lose their human nature and become reanime, what people call zombies, I call reanime, because these are people who, to the eye and to the spirit, have clearly died. They are no longer people. They have perished, but by some means have become reanimated, can walk not talk, but walk, growl, hunt, and eat human flesh, you will find these unclean dragons 
here within the United States. The test of the righteous. For the day will not come a day of great wrath against the children of unrighteousness. That day will burn like an oven. It will be a day of terror among the faithful when they see how the wicked are repaid. The faithful, the faithful will be faint when they see the judgment of America, both within and without. Those who serve the Lord will know that I am God when they see how fiercely I will repay Babylon. The day of the Lord is near. So let those who are in their houses, meaning if you are in the spiritual house of safety and righteousness, meaning that you are in Christ, let those who are in their houses stay in them, but let those who are still outside come now into the safety of faith in Christ, in the Lord Jesus. And what God is saying is that when he judges this country, the people who know him as God, the people who serve him as Lord will almost want to pass out when they see the severity of the punishments that will be given to this country. And I see often people write on, on my channel and they write on the blog, all this has been said by the Lord before we await it and everything. And, and what that tells me is that really many people are inhabiting, um, an unwise reality because it is the arrogance of man to think that you are prepared for the things that I'm speaking of. It really is. It's the silent people, perhaps the people who have never commented, that are the wisest. Because if you think that you are able to bear the presence of your family members and your relatives that have taken this injectable solution, who will turn into other beings and stand before you and you think because these people will have the ability to track through DNA. I have shared this in the prophecy entitled A Dream of the End of America and I still have others coming up. Um, if you think that you are able to bear this, if you think that you are able to bear watching your child that you gave birth to completely become socialized according to the beast system, as God has said, pick up the phone and tell the end times police to come to your address to take you and your husband and anyone else in the house who believes in Jesus into custody. If you think that you are able to inhabit this world that the Lord has shown me where blood will be on the roads, they will have public executions in this nation. I'm sitting here in September, 2021, and I'm telling you the things that are ahead. And yet the faithful come to this channel and they're like, yeah, but these things, we expect them and it will be glorious. Uh, it will be for the glory of the Lord. You really have no idea of understanding the scripture when it is written by the hand of a God that cannot die. And it is so unwise. The scripture says, wail, wail, for the day of the Lord is at hand. A day that will burn like an oven, destruction from the Almighty. It's typical human behavior to think that there is something in you, perhaps your heart or your lungs or your kidney, that is able to bear watching this with the eye. Yet the Lord says, that his people who will not be harmed by this will want to faint and pass out when they see the things that I am talking about come to pass. Isaiah 13 says, every man's heart will melt in fear. Pangs and sorrow like a woman giving birth will grab a hold of them and they will stare at one another with red faces as if their faces were aflame. I can only caution people to be careful. God is not who you think he is. He truly is not. The Lord says that the United States will be destroyed before his face. I will go through this quickly. Towers will fall and tall buildings will be humbled by bomb blasts and nuclear attack in many cities. 
The Lord says that many cities will collapse physically and there will also be social collapse because the services will break down. They will become disrupted. They will become spotty at first and then they will become unreliable and then they will be disrupted for many weeks before they finally fail. So this is, you're not getting power. You're not getting um, gas. You're not getting heat. You're not getting many things. The government will be unable to sustain social services. So those who are dependent on a social Social security, those who are dependent on welfare, WIC, which is women, infants, and children, all those services will come to an abrupt halt as America is bankrupted. And God says that social services will fail. So the social infrastructure as well as the physical infrastructure will fail. And as he was speaking, I saw the buildings basically being shattered because of impact coming in from missiles. So I don't know the different types of missiles. I have no understanding of these things. But what I saw is he depicted it almost like a cartoon. You know when something explodes in a cartoon or there's a punch in a cartoon, has it how it has that big spiky impact. So here there would be a big spiky impact to show this is a hard blow. I saw that around the buildings and glass buildings, especially just shattered and the glass became very dangerous projectiles that went out for many feet, um, harming people. So the trash, the water, the power, the gas, all these things, they will eventually fail. And for that, you can see the prophecy signs of ruin in America. God says that many of the cities will turn to gangland cities. So to all the people who are always talking about Chicago, Chicago is going to come to a town near you. Says life in America will become survival of the fittest and it will be very dangerous to live in populated areas like cities. People will take resources from whoever has them and there will be great panic and fear and wickedness and the lack of provision is what will cause people to become violent and start robbing one another. So you might have a neighbor who didn't prep, he never watched this channel or any channel, didn't know what was going on and then to save his family, this person will literally take a weapon and begin to rob those who did prep. So the Lord said that every word he has spoken through me as his servant will come to pass. I always watch with interest when people come here and say things. And the reason I don't answer is because I literally have no need to defend myself. The vindication is in scripture and it says, when the prophet speaks a thing and it comes not to pass, then you shall not be afraid of him. God did not send him. But if I am here by the word of the Lord, and you have already seen some of the things that I have spoken coming to pass, then when they all fulfill themselves, do I have a need to say anything? I do not. We move on to, di to disease. Now, this is something that I was seeing um, for the last two weeks. It's graphic, and um, I pray that those who hear, if you are not guilty of this, God bless you. But if you are guilty of this, please listen. The Lord says that any person who is in fornication will be struck with disease in their private parts. And unfortunately, I did see this and I will describe it. The Lord said he will start to do this now. You will have a stench. So you will stink with the disease that God will give you down there. He says you will have a drip. You will have inflammation, which is great swelling that makes any movement unpainful in the swollen area. And you will have a discharge that cannot be cured. God says that you will suffer from the itch that cannot be cured. And you can find this in Deuteronomy. This is one of the diseases that God said he would bring upon people who sin. The Lord says you will reek, which means that you will be unable to go out in public and be among people because of the stench that will come from you. He said that science and medicine will not be able to help you. And so you will stink so badly that no creams, no cortisol, no... um pills, nothing will be able to help what will happen to you. And he said, who told you to sin against me? Who told you that you can lie on a bed of fornication? Who told you that you can eat the bread of the married? People who have waited on God and entered into covenant, man and wife only, that is marriage. One man, one woman, Nothing else is godly marriage in the sight of God. He said, who told you that you can take the bread of the married and sin against me and then still call my name and call me Lord? Give me a moment to adjust the lighting, please. So the Lord says, who told you that you can sin against me and then still call my name and refer to me as, as Lord 
while you are living in this condition. He says that I will strike you with disease. In your lower bowels, you will have fungus. You will have worms. Brothers and sisters, I saw these worms. I saw these worms as far back as 2020. The Lord showed me a vision where a woman had received this judgment. And she went to the doctor and she was not honest with what she was suffering with. So the poor doctor said, well, why don't you get comfortable and change into this? And I will check. And when he checked, he wasn't ready. His bile rose and he almost vomited. He covered his mouth and fled. He fled from the room. I saw another image where the doctor was angry. And the doctor was angry for multiple reasons. He was angry or she was angry on, in, in terms of why do I have to go through this? And he was angry at, at the person for putting them in that position. He was just also angry with life. He was angry like, what can possibly have happened for living things to be nesting in a human being while the human being is alive. Because you see, the things that consume flesh, little maggots and little flies and little worms, they only come upon us when the breath of God has left us. So when we die, yes, when the breath of God has left the temple, when the Holy Spirit has departed, or just the breath of God, Numa, has left us, yes, then the animals can feast on this thing that God loves. For this is what God loves and God dwells here. But for you to still be alive and they are feeding on you, that is the judgment of the Lord. And God said, repent of your sins and come to me. The final part of this prophecy is the Lord says that the ark is closing. So to those of you who are still taking your time to come to God, he says, you're still making your decision if you want to switch over to the faithful life of being a child of God. And you think that there's time to get right with Jesus, but you just want to have your fun first. He said, do not be deceived. The door is closing. And when it is closed, and here the Lord just began to show me scenes. So just scenes and impress upon my heart about the man Noah said that Noah's neighbors watched him working for 120 years on a boat that was so big that it was impossible to miss. The boat sat in view of everyone at that time. And Noah also, the Bible says, is a preacher of righteousness. And so Noah was also warning, come into the sanctity, come into the, the protection of the Lord. And he said that they did nothing. They mocked and they did not pay attention. They were simply watching like spectators who watch reality TV to see what would be the outcome of Noah's work on this boat. And then the flood came and he said they took their belongings and they took their children and they ran to where the plot of land was. But the Lord said that he shut the door upon Noah. So the Lord will seal the time when you can come. He will seal the time where you can say, give me one more chance. And he said that those who do not want to come when the ark is still accepting applications, when the ark of God's salvation is still accepting heartfelt repentance, when God is still taking people who repent of their sins and they walk away from that, la that other lifestyle cold, they drop it cold, or even if they are struggling with the sin, they come to the cross and they cling and say, Lord, let me not lose my life. He says that to all who behave like Noah's neighbors, you will weep, you will not be admitted, and you will perish in your sins. And so another thing the Lord spoke of is the deception that is in this nation, how this nation sees herself as a fruitful nation, a productive nation, and a nation that is God-fearing, a God-fearing nation. He says that these deceptions are so great and they are greatly stoked in part by the false prophets and the pastors who lie. He says that the false religious system of America has flourished here until people actually believe that God truly loves America. And they really believe that this nation is a nation that has the favor and blessing of God resting on it. But he told me, Celestial, nothing could be further from the truth. Damnation and judgment is resting upon the United States. 
I will get more into that in a second video. The Lord spoke of a coming world war, he said that this war is a war that America will get herself into because she doesn't know when to stop. He says that it's, America has a big mouth and that one day she will mess with the wrong nation. A world war is coming, a global war that will engulf this planet and at the center of that war will sit this nation that does not know when to stop. The Lord said that this war will start as a very small conflict, but the thing about it is that everyone will have an opinion. So everyone will be speaking and everyone will have something to say and America the brave will open her mouth in the midst of this conflict to do what she always does. But this time it will end in destruction for her. And so I saw foreign soldiers here in the United States and they were taking wives. And I don't mean that they were making marriage proposals to the women. They were raping women and sexually taking them by force. And what happened is that after a man would sexually take a woman, it was seen by all the other soldiers as, oh no, that's his. And so they would stay away from that woman. And that woman was almost like a sister wife to that man. God says that they will pick and choose among the women of this nation according to their preference. And I've shared that in multiples of the videos where I've talked about captivity, that I saw that the soldiers came here and they selected among the women according to what fascinated them. And so there were some soldiers, especially among the Asians, who were fascinated by women that have different colored hair and different colored eyes, green eyes, red hair, blonde hair, something not commonly seen in their nations. But there were other men who came here and they were captivated by the women of other ethnicities because they are more voluptuous and they have more generous proportions to their bodies. And so I saw that women of Latina and African-American descent were also greatly, greatly punished. I even saw that people who bend their gender. So people who now are called, are born Harry, but walking around dressed as Megan, I saw that these people suffered very greatly because when the Russians especially came here, the Russians understand without any confusion, and so too the Chinese, that a man is a man and a woman is a woman. And so I saw the people who practice the alphabet lifestyle, the LQT, they were treated horrifically and they did not make it in many, many, many situations that the Lord showed me. And all this was part of the judgment for practicing this lifestyle. And so... There are many, many more things in this prophetic word, but it will be very long if I go through all of them. I saw that the people were taken into captivity because of the war that America lost. I saw them sitting in neat rows on ships and they were crying as if they would die. The kind of crying where you know this is it. There is nothing that you can say. You've already been stripped naked and you are already on this ship and you are already going to where you don't know. And I saw that they will build bricks. They will build roads. They will build towers, bridges, and housing systems in other nations. And um, the Lord said that the slave trade that America participated in long ago just as it came from America the first time, it will come to America again. People will labor in something called a gulag, which is basically a labor camp where you work until you can't work anymore and you die. So I saw people with minimal food, minimal clothing, hardly any hours to rest, very unreasonable hours to work, back-breaking labor unreasonable demands upon the human vessel until the flesh of a person just can't stand it anymore. And I saw that people wanted to die, but that soldiers watched and monitored the gulag and you had no opportunity to kill yourself. In captivity, they will rather shoot you than allow you to kill yourself. And so I will stop it here. I always ask you to go to the blog and read these words for yourself. I'm not going to argue with anyone about anything. It is either that you will hear the spirit of the Lord warning this nation in these videos, or you will not. As I said recently, God said that the unrighteous will simply get more unrighteous and the wicked will get more wicked. And so when God is speaking to you and you think that it means nothing, clearly 
you want to participate in the behavior of the latter two. So this is Celestial with the Master's Voice. I have faithfully delivered the prophecy to the Four Corners, September 19, 2021. Kindly visit the blog so that you can read the transcript of this prophetic word. You can find everything to do with this ministry in the description box below. Thank you to those who continually support the Lord's work. I pray for everyone, whether you support or not. My prayer mostly is that you will not have a brass forehead and that you will listen to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the churches. Thank you, and until I see you again, goodbye.